Another big part of Hospice's mission is their grief counseling, which they offer at no cost for up to 13 months after the death of a loved one who was previously in their care. Join me now with more on all the services they offer and their new counseling center is Executive Director of Counseling Services, Amy Hill. Amy, thank you again for being a part of this show and, and talking about this. Um, First of all, congratulations, you all have opened a new counseling center, correct? Well, we're close. Yeah, okay. um, it will be opening It will in be May. open, yes. <laughs> yes, so we currently have a grief counseling center um, being built, mm -hmm. and um, that's through generous donations. Yeah. That's, we wouldn't have been able to do it without it. Um, so that is supposed to be completed in May, all so right. we're so excited. We're excited to kind of preview the opening of that and the services that you all offer through that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you all see the need, yes, right? And yes. that was why you all had yes. to open the new center. Yes, we, we operate out of a older building yeah. that is not um, the most accessible building. Um, and so uh, when we were we decided to build this building, we designed it so that it's a beautiful space, lots of natural light. Aww. We want people that are grieving coming in feeling really warm and welcome and um, lots of beautiful group rooms that are going to serve so many children and just really our goal with grief counseling is to really provide services that access um, grief support in, in not just traditional ways, but lots of yeah. different programming. I think it's incredible offering um, grief support services for 13 months yes. free yes. of charge yes. after a loved one. That's mm -hmm. extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have to have a family member in your care to get your counseling? No, so one of the things that Hospice does that really supports the mission of grief and supporting our community is that we will see anybody that's, mm. that's had a loss in our community, uh, regardless of ability to pay. So um, their loved one didn't have to be in our care, and, and we serve quite a bit of the community um, that's grieving. So. It's a really great what, part of our mission. What are the different type of services that you offer if somebody does seek yes. you out, whether they have a loved one with you all mm -hmm. or, or maybe they're just struggling? Yeah. Um, how can you help everybody? So we do individual counseling. Uh, that's with a uh, licensed clinician that has special training in grief. Um, we also do a whole different group, bunch of groups. Um, depending on what kind of loss it could be, uh, we just did a uh, book club, um, reading through it is what we call it, uh, with one of our um, favorite grief books that we that we encourage people to read. Um, we also do art therapy groups. You know, we know not everybody wants to necessarily talk. Yeah. And so we offer a lot of different ways to work through their grief. Um, we ha offer grief yoga. Um, we know that grief gets stored in our bodies. So mm -hmm. working through grief through yoga is something that we offer right now. Um, we have all kinds of different children programming um, that's been really successful. So not everybody grieves is, the same. Right. Right. And right. you just got to find a way to walk through it and mm -hmm. get through it. And you all have a service yeah. for everybody. And grief is a natural, normal process yeah. that everybody's going to experience at some point. And what we find is most people just need to talk to somebody yeah. that can really normalize what they're feeling and, and make them feel less alone about it. Uh, well, it is the holiday season, which is, it can be really difficult for a lot of people, whether they just lost someone or it even could be a, a while since mm -hmm. they lost someone. And I think it, it can just pull up these feelings yes. that maybe we didn't deal with properly mm -hmm. in the past or, or just a memory or something mm -hmm. that happens makes us recall back mm -hmm. to that person. What resources or what tips do you offer people yeah. uh, no matter where they are? Yeah, so that we, they can utilize. We know that there's a lot of people that will be going through the holidays for the first time without their loved one. That's that's an extremely difficult time for families. Mm -hmm. So we have special programming. It's called Hope for the Holidays, and um, it is a multi-series of, of groups that are sprinkled in between all the holidays. So we right now are meeting, and anybody can join throughout the series. Um, and so we sprinkle them before Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving, before Christmas, New Year's, um, because it's all these firsts for so many people. And, and some people, it's not their first, but they're like, I wanna, I wanna do better with this. I wanna yeah. be able to say my person's name at the holiday and feel like it's okay. Um, so many people just, they don't, they don't know how to really um, kind of make their new normal at the holiday. So that's what we talk about in those groups. What, what do we do? What's, what right. is normal now right. in this new normal? And for, for those groups, accessibility is really important. So we do in-person groups for Hope for the Holidays, but we also do virtual because so many people 
life's crazy, you've got kids. And so they can just hop on a virtual that's great. virtual support group with us for the holiday um, support. So that's you know really important for families. Oh, it's so easy to do. Uh, Amy, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. And we want to remind everybody once again, uh, if you want to join this group during the holidays or maybe you want to suggest it to somebody else, just go to the website on your screen.